Hello and a very warm welcome back to Fox's Weight Watcher Kitchen. I'm Johnny Fox. Now, as you can see from the ingredients here today, we're going to be cooking the gel phrases sauce that I've been making for a lot of friends, Asian friends, neighbors and relatives for a lot of years. The reason I do it my way, personally, I prefer the flavor. And if you're trying to lose weight, because as you know, guys, I was with Weight Watchers, as you can see, lost quite a considerable amount of weight. If you buy the jarred sauces, it works out like the Patax, for example, 16 points for a jar of sauce. This one is half the quantity of points. So ingredients, let's take a look. We've got some onions, the bird's eye chilies. We've got the traditional garlic and ginger. We're gonna make our own paste out of that. Fresh, I always use fresh vine tomatoes. The flavor is so much different. Green and red capsicum pepper. And you can see there is a nice little selection of spices as well. How many spices? Quite a few. Let's take a look and see what we've got on there. We've got cashmere uh, chili powder, which is about half a teaspoonful. We're gonna use coriander powder, half a teaspoonful there again. Mustard powder, one teaspoonful. Uh, paprika, one teaspoonful. Turmeric, half a teaspoon. We're using cumin seed, because it's fresh. If you grind down in the Petzl Mortar your own seeds, only half a teaspoonful. I'm using fenugreek leaves, and again, I'll be grinding that through the Petzl Mortar. I'll also be using, you know these cardamom seed pods? I'll be using five of these cardamom seed pods, but I'm going to grind these down. I'm taking the seeds from inside of the pods and I'll be putting that through the Petzl and mortar as well. So I'm going to quickly chop this lot up, get prepared, and then I'll show you how, how we're going to put it all together on the stove. So back in a second once it's chopped up. Okay, so everything's all prepared, it's all chopped up. First thing we're going to do is weigh, get your gram scales. We need to weigh 24 grams of rapeseed oil. The reason I do this, this is for the points. If you're with Weight Watchers, I mean, if you're not, just pour oil, oil into the bottom. But because I was following a program with Weight Watchers, I wanna get the weight of this absolutely spot on so we can get to the point. So I'm looking at 24 grams, and that is just about there. As you can see, not much at all. Just straightforward from the supermarket, beautiful rapeseed oil. The reason I use this one, it's got a much better taste than all the standard ones. I'm gonna keep that on to a nice low heat because the other thing I wanna share with you guys as well, these little finger chilies that I use, or bird's eye chilies, so they've all got their different names. When you're making a gel phrase sauce, they always say it's medium to hot. The reason you can change a gel phrase so much, I've got some of my neighbors that like it hot, other people don't like it too hot, but they like the flavor. I'm gonna show you the tricks of the trade in this one. Bird's eye chilies, let's try a small one first. If you like it hot, this is all we're gonna do is make our chili oil to start with. If you like it hot, take your knife, slice it straight through the middle with all the seeds, and then pop that straight into the oil and leave it there. The other technique you can use is slice it all down, take away the cork, because you don't need that, and you can cook it with all the seeds and that in there as well. And trust me guys, if you like a hot curry, that will do it for you. You can even slice it down in a very fine ratio and put all that in and leave it in. You will end up with your hot jowl frazy. Personally, and a lot of my Indian friends as well, and let's face it, Indian people know what they're talking about. They, they never eat really hot curries. I always take the stalk off of mine and I use three of these because I like my medium flavor. Rather than slice it through the whole middle, all I do, I take my knife, you know when you're pricking your sausages? All I do is basically prick the skin all the way around. Help if I get the knife on there, but I've got a knife that's too big, I think, for this one. And just prick the skin so basically the oil can penetrate into the chili. Take the stalk off of this one again. I don't like the stalks in there, that's better. And so I normally do this a different way. Pop him over the other side and just make a few holes in it. So all it's gonna do is release the flavor of the chili. Stalks off again. They, all these chilies, by the way, they've all been washed first. I always say before you use any food, just wash them up nicely and give that one another few little pops in there as well. And length of time, guys, when you're putting these in the pan, I always get me a little thing and just keep watching this as it goes around. The oil, you can hear, is just starting to come up nice now. This is the taste. As you can see, there's a couple of small seeds gone in there already. I don't want those seeds, because that, to me, is going to be hot. So we can remove that one and remove that one. I don't like these seeds when they get too hot, because th th this is the heat of a gel frazy. 
and all we do is just play with this in the oil for about four to five minutes and I'll show you rather than wait four to five minutes any little seeds that pop out the end I just take mine out because I don't want the seeds in there they're cooking up nicely already but you can you can smell when you get this flavor coming up purely from the chilies because all we're doing at this point is creating a chili oil this is going to give a unique flavor to the gel frazier a lot of people say to me over the years how do you get it hot how do you get it to go so cool and you know but the taste is still the same and the bit that we're after we can see from this one already you can see that little almost burnt on one side that is all we're trying to do with these then we know we've got enough of the oil from the chilies released in or the, enough of the flavor from the chilies released into the oils and as you can see flame wise i'm only on the small one down here at the moment because i don't want to burn these because you can out of the whole process of cooking these to me this is probably the most important part of cooking your jowl frazy getting these chilies in you can see it's just starting to catch now changing color just keep flicking them around we won't do any cutting and editing at this point i just want to show you because you know like i say with with any kind of cooking there's tricks to the trade this is one of the tricks i don't like mine hot but i want and you can you can smell now the chili is starting to incorporate into that oil and that i think is almost there and because again guys like i said i don't like mine too hot i will now remove these straight from the pan now i've got my chili flavored oil and i don't want any seeds so you, this is where you be really careful when you do these if you don't want it too hot see these little seeds up the side i don't want those because they will be far too hot now we can just put the onions in and ingredients guys i'll put all the ingredients down the bottom but i'm using you know the ones i chopped up earlier on this is 150 grams of onion you can see flame wise I'm still keeping it on that sort of medium heat to get it going. Just going to incorporate these with the oil just a little bit. And then we're going to reduce that down. Now, the, the one ingredient you won't see on my recipe is the ever famous salt seasoning. This is to taste. If you want to get it to taste like mine, that is round about a good teaspoonful of salt. I always find when I'm cooking this down, the salt will always help the onions reduce down. Once they're all fully incorporated, I will transfer gases at this point because I want it to go a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna go onto the back one and then cook this down a little bit quicker. And whilst that's now fully covered in oil, the other thing I'll start adding in is some of these other ingredients as well. So remember, the we've got a quarter of green capsicum, a quarter of red capsicum pepper. Just gonna put those in there as well because I like to fry all of these down at the same time. It just, to me, it incorporates better. Everyone's got their own techniques. And then once this starts reducing down slightly, then I'll add my garlic and ginger paste. Quantity wise, when you're looking at this, I've got 60 grams. The way I do mine, you've probably seen me before in my blender, I think I did it on the chicken tikka masala, little tricks. I do freeze some of this down as well, or, and I do keep some in an, another little Tupperware container in the fridge because I use garlic and ginger paste quite a lot. If you're gonna make up a batch of this, I get usually two garlic bulbs, which is roughly 100 grams, get exactly the same weight of the ginger, so it's a 50-50 mix put it into the blender and just whiz it a few times so it breaks down, you'll find it's still a bit too dry. To get it to this consistency, all I do is add a bit of water in there. It, it serves a double purpose. It helps it to blend down a lot quicker and a lot easier. If I'm freezing these as well afterwards, because the ice cube tray that I use, it's incredible how when you get used to things over the years, the ice cube tray, when I'm putting mine in afterwards, each cube is 20 grams. So I don't have to work about recipe quantities like with this one if i was taking it from the freezer three cubes straight into there let them dissolve naturally because this one i want to show you guys the way to get the best flavors from this gel freezer you can use instead of like we, we know with things like the the seasons and things like that the cumin on you can use cumin powder you won't get exactly the same flavor as the one that i'm cooking today because i'm using freshly ground seeds same as the fenugreek leaves you can get fenugreek powder you can put that one in as well 
And same as these other ingredients, mustard powder. You, if you use Coleman's mustard powder instead of the one later on, I'll be showing you that video after this one, how to make that mustard powder my way. It's an uh, elderly Indian woman when I was, I was a young lad, she taught me how to make the mustard powder. All these ingredients are what I call the freshest ingredients. Same as these tomatoes, you can use tin tomatoes, you won't get the same taste. If you get fresh on the vine tomatoes, you probably notice it when you make your sandwiches, you get that lovely fresh flavor from a fresh vine tomato over a standard tomato that you buy cheap and cheerful from a pack from your local supermarket. See, this is now starting to reduce down nicely, so I will now add in the famous Indian garlic and ginger paste. And this is where, guys, this is where I start getting really hungry now. I can't, I can't wait to eat. But again, the beautiful thing about this, because we're making it into a sauce, you can see beautiful colors, it's all gonna be enriched with flavor because we're making this into a sauce. If you want to have, you can have a chicken gel frazy, you can have a lamb gel frazy, a pork gel frazy, you can even have really a vegetarian gel frazy. If that's what you prefer, all we're doing is making a sauce. It's the same way you go to your local supermarket, imagine that being your jar of your curry sauce, you just put it over the, what do you need to do, leave it on the pot for about 20 minutes and it's cooked. It's that simple. And all we're doing is making this sauce. You can make batches of this. I, I have done this several times, you know, quantified. I've got a, a, a huge pot that I do and I do do it. I get it onto the fast burner when I'm doing it, you know, down the other, down the other end of the kitchen into what I call the, the, the normal kitchen end. Get it onto the fast burner and I'll make a big batch of this. I use probably five or six onions, about, you know, two garlic bulbs, a great big piece of root ginger and I'll make a whole batch of it. And then what I do afterwards, you know, like these little Tupperware containers, I use this one to throw all the waste away afterwards, but I've got boxes and boxes of these as well. Then I'll just put all the sauce into there. Single portions, double portions, because this sauce that I'm making today is equivalent to what you would normally get of a whole jar in a supermarket, which is enough for two people to have their whatever curry flavor that you like. This one just happens to be a gel frazy curry. But this is starting to smell really nice. We're gonna give this another couple of minutes to reduce these down a bit further. Gonna cut and edit at this point and we'll come back again in a minute. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so it's been reducing down now for a good two to three minutes. As you can see, it's getting nice and dry. The oil is almost drying up a tree and everything's reducing down. This is now where we start adding in all of the seasons, all the spices, everything goes in there together. This is another reason why I put everything onto the same plate it makes it so easy to do. And all we're gonna do at this point is just incorporate all of this together. And when you're doing powders and your, your, all your different seasons to go into these curries, the little trick is when you're cooking it in the oil, I mean, normally this would be, if it was a standard Indian house, this would be now swimming in ghee or you know, vegetable oils, whatever oil that they're using, this would be swimming. They cook it roughly 30 seconds to a minute as a dry powder in the oil. And what that does, it actually infuses all of the flavors into the oil. This one you can see is a lot drier. We're still only keeping this going for usually about 30 seconds to a minute. Again, it's something over the years and years and years of cooking, you do get used to how your cooking's gonna be. I can just start smelling all those lovely fragrances coming through now. Now, normally you could add some water at this point, but because we're adding fresh tomatoes, this will also stop the spices from burning because what we don't wanna do is burn the spices. And also at this point as well, in the recipe you'll see in the ingredient list below, this will also call for one tablespoonful of tomato puree. And because I've been doing this for quite a few years, there's my tablespoonful of tomato puree, straight out of the tube. And then we just blend all this together, because at this point, we are almost there. It doesn't take long, once you've, done, once you've done all the prep work, and as you can see, I'm keeping this moving all the time. I don't like it to catch the pan, I don't want to burn anything. All the while it's in still almost a dry consistency like this. The last thing you want to be doing, guys, is burning things. So now we've got that, as you can see, it's, it's, this is where I say, it's, it's, you get used to the feel of how your cooking comes. This is now all starting to move around almost like a clump. 
That's the only way to describe this to somebody. You see, if you try and move it around from the inside, it always wants to come back and it's almost chasing itself around. That means it's getting to, you know when you make your gravy and you end up with that bit, bit thick and then you start adding some more water to thin it down? Pretty much the same as what we're doing with this, but we're trying to get those spices to go into all the tomatoes and fragrances and the tomato puree before we add the liquid level to it. But we're almost there now. So all we're gonna do is add a touch of water straight out of the kettle. We're not gonna have too much water to start with because all I want to do is incorporate these flavors a bit more because this is this is a bit honestly when I'm doing curries I don't know about you guys it's just one of those things that if, if you're a curry eater like I am I love my curries this one is one of my favorites I do make my tikka masalas I make Dan Sachs booners and other other ones as well but Jal Frazee for me is probably my favorite curry purely because the amount of flavours that come through and because I don't like it too hot. You saw earlier on, there's all the chilies. If you like it hot, you would have just left those chilies in there. And then when you're eating it, you've got the sweats coming on. You need your pint of lager mm, before you know where you are. All the weight goes back on again. But this for a curry sauce, we are almost there. That is thickening up nicely. I'm gonna put that to one side. In fact, I'll keep it on there. Now what we're gonna do is just cover it with some water. As you can see, almost to the point where we've covered over the top. We're going to let this come up to the boil, because now we know all the flavours, guys, this, this is all incorporated, an absolute treat. And you can see it's gone nice and quiet now, it's not sizzling so much now, and this is where we can, at this point, put everything to one side, get your lid, Put your lid on the top and just let it simmer down. I'm just gonna get this to come up to a good boil first, give it one more stir, and then we're gonna simmer this down. I leave it on here, if I'm realistically anywhere between sort of 40 minutes to an hour, depending on, you know, flame speed at the moment, we're up quite high. But once that's boiled up, you can see it's almost there. Now, once it's come up to a real good boil, then what I'll do is I'll turn that down and just let it simmer nice and slowly, give it a constant stir. If the water level goes down a bit more, I'll get the kettle, turn it back on and add some more water in there. And we just keep doing that and doing that and doing that for about 45 minutes. So rather than keep you guys going for 45 minutes, let's cut the video there and we'll come back and show you 40 minutes later. See you in a bit. Okay, so we're almost there now. It's been on the stove for, oh, 47 minutes. As you can see, it's getting almost dry below. What I've done, I have taken from the kettle a couple of times, just a little bit of water. You can see it's just starting to catch the bottom of the pan. This is where, when you're stirring things and checking things, just keep making sure that you're adding that little bit of water so you're not burning it. If it catches the pan slightly, it doesn't matter, as long as you can give it a little cover with some water, because this is basically the sauce all ready for whatever you want to have with it. As you can see, that is absolutely delicious. The, the fragrances, guys, the, the smell of this, I don't know about you, but if you're a curry lover like I am, this is one of my all-time favorites. And as you can see, all I've done, I've just thinned that down again, so it's not catching the bottom of the pan anymore. And at this point, because tonight I'm gonna to do what I call a split split dinner. My wife wants something different to what I want tonight. I wanna to have this gel frazier because I've been cooking it. So that is all now ready to be divided up. And all I do, because it is, like I say, it's, I mean, when you buy the jars of those sauces, it normally says it serves four because you're adding lots of ingredients in. For me tonight, I'm gonna to have a chicken gel frazier, but what I wanna do is save some of this sauce for another day. Usually two good spoonfuls should be enough because it's usually about four spoonfuls. That is a portion for another day. I'm just gonna put that to one side because tonight, as you can see, I'm gonna have chicken gel frazier and it is this easy to cook your curry once you've got all of these ingredients in there. There's your curry sauce. All I'm doing is adding the chicken. If you want vegetables, if you want lamb, if you want pork, whatever substance you want to put in, it is literally this easy to do. So that is all into the sauce. Heat-wise, you can see we're still on a nice slow simmer. 
I am going to add just a touch more fluid because we're going to leave this to cook now for a further 15 minutes. That's all this is going to take once that comes up again to the nice temperature. Now the water and everything else is in there. All I'm going to do is pop the lid back on top because my one, I like chicken gel frazy. And you have seen, so you know when you go to these restaurants, they always do like a quarter of a tomato and then the chili over the top or a bit of coriander leaf. If you want to do that and make it look pretty, then that's what you want to do. The other thing as well, rice wise, if you're with Weight Watchers, which is what I was for a long, long time, rice wise, I've weighed myself 50 grams of basmati rice. That's a portion for one person. What I like to do in mine, if I get out my little handy dandy curry pot of all my spices, I'm gonna add just a teaspoonful, or the, the, the little spoon that comes with this, of turmeric powder inside of the rice. And then I'm gonna pour the hot water all over the rice. Rice wise, if you've never cooked basmati rice, unless you've got a rice steamer, with the rice I cheat. If you're going to go straight onto the stove like this, I would say cook the rice for about eight slash nine minutes, test it. If you like it harder, you can have it harder. If you like it softer, it will go too puddingified for what my palate's like. So I don't tend not to do mine too soft. What I tend to do, because I'm still cooking this for about 15 minutes, so I'm just gonna leave that on the side for about 10 minutes before I actually bring it up to the boil. And then it should coincide and time itself perfectly for my chicken curry. But when you look at this on the inside, I mean that is not even cooked yet but you can see this is virtually the same as when you go to a restaurant there is your chicken gel frazy curry like I say if you want vegetable curry if you want different meats in there all you've got to do is add them in keep the lid on it will steam itself through the juices there's your gel frazy one we're going to cut and edit at this point again come back and I'll show you how it all gets put together put it on the plate and then I'm going to have my gel frazy so back in a while Okay, so we're almost there. The rice has been done. I've strained that, got that onto the plate. Last look at this, the hob is now off. 15 minutes is all this has taken, guys, from a gel frazy sauce into a nice chicken gel frazy curry. And that is just about there. Washing up can be done. As you can see, a beautiful gel frazy dinner. The rice, as you can see with the turmeric, it gives it a lovely color. You don't have to go for the whole spoonful if you don't want it to go that orange. It's just a personal preference. I like mine to be really colorful. But the gel frazy, I'm gonna give you a little taste now. Oh, I'll rephrase that, shall I? I'm gonna give myself a little taste right now. Oh, hmm, that. Oh, that is absolutely, and again, I'm not going because <gasps> it's too hot. Remember the early part of the chilies? I don't like mine too hot, so it's not too hot. But flavor-wise, guys, this is absolutely delicious. And the one thing I did forget, I'll probably put it halfway through when I'm doing the editing on this one. You know when I put all the sauce together and added the water on the top, the one ingredient that I forgot to say that I was putting in as well, I remembered it the second I come off camera, one teaspoonful of coconut or desiccated coconut it will be once you once you see the video you'll see the little pop-up whoops forgot the forgot the coconut that goes in there as well and the sauce you can just leave it on there if you want to keep it on for longer than 45 minutes to an hour mine was almost an hour by the time i'd finished and added probably a couple of bits of water as it went through nearly the hour and then the chicken because I, I like my chicken gel frazy quick 15 minutes on there i boiled up the water added to the rice that is the whole dinner absolutely delicious guys hopefully you've enjoyed watching the video i've enjoyed making it i'm going to enjoy even more eating this dinner so thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed it you know where the subscribe button is if you want to be notified you know the bell button click on that we'll catch you on the next video and we'll catch you again soon take care bye now